But the, so the other the other side of that is when you take a team like the super teams, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have three lines that are very, very good. Even like your worst guy, if he came to Windsor or Chatham or you know a smaller center, he's going to be oh top. I'm not player. saying that I'm not saying he's the best, yeah, but he's going to be, be a top player. He's going to be a top six yeah. for sure. Oh, absolutely. But they have all all players are like that. Mm-hmm. Their D are all good D. Like whereas in in our small communities, you might have one really good or one pretty good or one average, and and it just starts falling yeah. off. Or you might have a bunch of average guys. Mm-hmm. They have to learn how to compete. But what I've seen with this is it over and over and over again is we, you have to think about this when you're jumping teams because we see this all the time. Man, it's kids' kids team starts to lose a little bit and they want to jump teams. But the thing is when you're only playing with good players, yeah, you're going to look good. So that's my that's my question, and I know scouts and GMs are smart enough to figure it out. But when you're when you're playing on a team and you've never had actually a bad pass – because when you're at a certain level, your passes are pretty much on. Your hockey IQ, if we're going to call it, is pretty much on. You can figure out plays and stuff like that. You just you're skating just a little bit faster, but things work a little bit more crisper. Like when I when I did my practices with the Bell Tire teams, I, on, I'm not joking. They're as crisp as any ice time I've ever had, including pros, because mm-hmm. they were just good players. Yeah. So the so the the issue is is now if you've won with whatever team let's whatever the great team is if you've won in u u8 u10 u12 u14 u16 and you've breezed through everybody and you've never had a good pass you've never really had the adversity never had a bad pass never really had that adversity never had a goalie that just sucked Mm -hmm. and then you get drafted to like if you went in early to a team that in the ohl that isn't a a, a top team because they're rebuilding and all of a sudden you're playing with because there's a ton of them, guys that are good, but they're good in different ways. You're playing with a plug now. Yep. That when he gets the puck, it's off the glass and out. It's not. It doesn't care if it's on your tape or it's area passes. And not everything's about you. How do you react? And what I've seen, more often than not, it's not good, yep. because someone's been wiping your ass since you're nine, and telling you how great you are and 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 babying you, and now you have the real competition where you got drafted high to a. a maybe a lesser team because they were expecting you to put it on your back and carry it. Yep. And without that kid doing that at a young age or at any age, right, in minor hockey, um, to fight through and compete when, when, when he has no chance. It's the underdog story again. Mm-hmm. When you have no chance and you hang in there and you either win or you, you, you take that good player and you make him pay the price all game, you're better. Yep. You're the better guy. Yeah. Well, the thing that's funny is you see these kids that as they kind of they're part of these super teams or whatever then they go into their draft and they'll the team will have like 10 kids get drafted or 12 kids of the 15 get drafted and then you get see a team like Windsor or Chatham or whatever and they have two yeah and then four years later there's one kid from that Toronto team that still plays and the one kid from the Chatham team that still plays and you see all these other kids like just fall off the wagon. So what happened? Yeah. And I think it, in my opinion, it speaks a lot to your point is they don't, you never learn how to battle. Like you never learn how to fight. So yeah. now you, now when, instead of being on a team of superstars, now they rely on you to make sure that they're winning or they're, that you're scoring or whatever. You're the guy that's supposed to do that. Well, now you don't have the supporting cast anymore. So yeah. now what do you do? Yeah, were you making other people better or other people That's making right. you better? That's right, exactly. So now it's not as clear to see. And when things are going good, it feels good. But now what happens when things are going shitty and you guys haven't won for seven games? Whatever. And mentally, like, how do you, how are you dealing with that? And a lot of kids yeah. can't deal with that. Yeah. But the other side of it, too, that I wanted to, to touch on and get your uh, you to touch on, too, is from the parents' perspective, like you're talking about the one dad that was all suck ass, we need to start mm-hmm. winning on Sundays and whatever. And it's like... Like you realize you, if you put your kid in that situation where he's always on the best team ever and they always win. And if you guys lose, you just go to the next good team so that you're always on the best team. Like, what is that doing for your kid? Like, that's a question that as as a, yeah. Like, so as a, as a parent, like you need to think about that too. Like, what's this about? Cause you're going to get more looks and more opportunities if you're on the super team. But again, like we've talked about this so many times, like playing the long game, you know, you're, you're kids minor hockey career and how many championships they win doesn't matter 
It actually doesn't matter. Right. If they want to be a professional player, their minor hockey championships are irrelevant. So are they developing in the best way to be able to navigate becoming a professional? Because yeah. it's way a lot harder when you get to the OHL now, or it's a lot harder when you get to these top junior leagues or you go play at college or, or whatever it is. So if you don't have those skills and every time you guys lost on a Sunday, you just took your football and went home and switched teams the next season because the coach won't play your kid or whatever. It's like you got to think about more than just yeah. we should win right now so that people see my kid right now. It's not just about that. No, that's why I'm so proud of the Windsor team, the 05s, mm-hmm. because uh, yeah, that's a great example. That's it's like so that such a good team. example yeah. because they were the uh, they weren't a good team in in Pee Wee, right? Pee Wee. Yeah. No, I, I remember. But they weren't. They weren't a good team. They just uh, you know they 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 try their little playing little kid hockey and then they had. Uh, once the hitting started, they became a little better, but they were still finding their way. But these kids just battled. And so sitting with my son, some days he was like, oh, man. And I go, no, 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 we don't. And he wasn't talking about quitting or, or changing teams. Like but, in terms of the team not playing well or not winning yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and he wasn't jumping ship or anything. And I said, no, this is where this is your team. Yeah, This is your team. And I said, it's it's if you want to be a player, you're going to have to be one of the guys that turns this thing around. And uh, it takes one person or two people to to turn to to, to make it a winning culture yeah, or, a tide, or yeah. a competitive culture or whatever, and that's what happened. And then they turned that team around from like not competitive at all to a very very good yeah, team, and 100%. and that's some good coaching and some great kids. Yeah, and and but but it was that grind. They knew how to they they knew that if they were down one, they had they didn't just think okay we gotta you know not what i was gonna say they they don't they do okay maybe there's another way we have to play this one so we had they had kids on the team that would just start banging guys and they don't out uh out ugly them right oh yeah and uh and and they started winning and they became like a team that guys the other teams were scared of for sure and uh one way well i remember watching them and and it's really too bad because they were in the final. Were they in the finals last year when the season got yeah. canceled? So well, they were in their they were, alliance finals. Yeah. So the, the their to league take them to the Ontario championship. Right. So then COVID. So they yeah. that was canceled, and then they didn't get to play this last year either. Mm-hmm. And it would they would have been right exactly what you're saying, mm-hmm. like a hardworking team, small market team, going up to these ter- big tournaments with all these big teams yeah. and hanging in there, like playing good games against top teams. Yeah. And you can see they have that that dynamic you were talking about where their first three players, top three players are good. And then it just kind of off the cliff yeah. after that, right? Where yeah. not that their bottom end kids are terrible, but they're just like your average to below average AAA kids maybe. Top th- the top guys would make the the, the big teams mm-hmm. around the, right? And be yeah, they'd make good. any team they want the to ones for. Right. If that's one way to yeah, say it. Yeah, that's one way. There they, there's no chance. Whereas, like you were saying with these big teams, they got nine forwards, six D that yeah. are all good. Yeah, and probably and, a goal. Yeah, and a goal. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's, it's that's that's the that's the difference. So like you get those kids, but they have no choice but to learn how to battle. 